announce the nominees for the 2018 Zurich Players Player of the Year, which will be announced on Wednesday, 16th of May at the Clayton Hotel in Ballsbridge. Tig Furlong, Conor Murray and Keith himself are in the running. And Keith joins us now in the studio. You're very welcome. Thank you. A quiet play at home yesterday from Bordeaux, I presume. Very quiet, yeah. Very quiet. Um, very depressing playing. You know, a lot of fellas with, with headphones on and... A lot, a lot of us wondering how it happened again. Mm. What um, conclusions did you reach on the flight home when you were thinking about why it had happened? I couldn't. I did. I can't get the end of it. Um, you know, I, st I still, I still don't know. And obviously, didn't get a chance to look back at the game yet. But um, you know, it was missed opportunities, and I suppose we we had an off day and. You know, when you give a team a lead like that in the first half, it's it's hard hard to try and get back into it, even though we nearly did. Mm. You know, but it was probably just probably two scores too far away from us. Yeah, because I saw, like Tom gets his second try in 18 minutes, and then three minutes later he's gone over again, and he does that little strange pass to Machino, and at 21 minutes it kind of felt like suddenly this thing was was done, and I presume a shell shocked feeling on the pitch. It it looked from the outside, you can tell us how it felt down there, but it looked very fast and like no collisions were landing and they were just moving the ball quickly and they're coming from everywhere. That's how it looked. I don't know what it was like down there. Yeah, I looked up, see, they were getting massive momentum against us. You know, they're, they're a massive squad. Um, couldn't really slow down their ball. They slowed down our ball really well. You know, we couldn't slow it down to get the defensive line set and they were... I suppose getting mismatches and and putting us under pressure and yeah, as you said, standing under a six after the third try, it was it was weird. It was like, how is this happening again? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. and you mentioned we were just chatting briefly before uh, we came on air. This is Munster's sixth semi-final and therefore your sixth semi-final since 2008 and Peter Armani was asked afterwards you know will you learn lessons from this he said lads I'm sick of learning lessons from these bloody semi-finals I need to actually get to a final yeah yeah and you know I'd back him up on what he said there like you know how much more do we have to learn to to get to a final you know and look we'll we'll tear it apart again mm. tomorrow and you know there's obviously the Pro 14 to play for this year and you know, we we're beaten in the final of, of that last year and hopefully we can get some bit of silverware this year. How much will you tend to learn or generally do you tend to learn when you watch a game back on TV? Will you see things that you hadn't spotted out there? Yeah, you know, things happen so quick on the field and, you know, some silly things like pass accuracy and stuff like that left us down yesterday, you know, and that's it on a Caroline. <laughs> driving us mad as well, you know. But I look, think in the first half, at one yeah. stage, he'd made, or maybe it was about midway through the second. I saw the stat; he'd made nineteen tackles, missed none, and probably doing a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah, well. yeah, he's. I think they're definitely in the final because of him, you know, and his his knowledge of the game and you know his work rate is 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 phenomenal. He's probably doing the work of three other yeah. fellas, you well, know. He won the penalty late on in Paris in the group stages. And they yeah. wouldn't be here without that, you know? No, exactly. And, you know, he chased that kick off and he caught it. It's something most wingers wouldn't do. Yeah. So, when you try and make sense of it, there must be some part of you that thinks, well, we really underperformed yesterday, for sure. Like, we can play a lot better than that, and we've proved that. Is there any other party that's thinking, well, we actually need more quality in as well, like, to compete at this level? Because we keep hitting the ceiling. We need reinforcements. We need more quality in the team. No, I think our, our quality is unbelievable and we've, we have a great squad, you know. Look at the Toulon game. You know, they're a bunch of superstars and, you know, we young lads like Sammy and and Woods playing and they backed her up and mm. it's just whatever's happening when we get into the play against the top teams, you know, the, the semi-finals and finals is... I don't know if it's a, a mental thing or... Do we go into our shell when it comes to final? Is the pressure too much? But that's something we have to look at. Um, Does it feel different? Like even the warm up, do you feel any way sluggish as a team? Are you looking around in the warm up thinking we're not quite ready to, to kick off in the right way here? 
No, everything was everything was fine yesterday. We were qu quite confident, and look, we, we spoke about that. We weren't going to leave pressure get to us, and we were going to play our own game. But for some reason, as I said, I don't I don't know. I have to look back at it. We we didn't do that. Does much change in the second half? I mean, they, maybe they take their foot off the pedal a touch, but you start playing better stuff and, and put some bits and bobs together. What was your feeling in the second half? Yeah, obviously we, we, we had to chase the game, you know, and we had a game plan going into it. We, on stats, they scored their, most of their tries from 0 to 20 minutes, you know, and that's when they're at the best. And, and we knew we, we'd get them tired and right. our fitness would take over, and, and that's what did happen in the end. But so the 20 to 80 minute plan worked okay? Yeah, you know, and I suppose when we did open up in, in the second half and started tackling more, we, we broke them down and got mm. a couple of tries ourselves, but... Because 14 missed tackles in that first half. Yeah, you know, you've, you're not going to get away with, with that at this at this level, like, you know, and mm. look, it's it's not from a, a lack of effort that happens in, in rugby, and unfortunately it, it happened to us yesterday. Yeah, so how... Um how sickening is this? Are you going to be pretty down about this for some time? You seem a little bit naturally quite down today. Yeah, yeah. I suppose till you till you have it, it's probably going to take to the. We, we play against Ulster the weekend. You know, we'll we'll have a look at it, but it's going to be was on the back of our mind till the season's over. What what could have been, and you know, it's it's, it's frustrating, but. It, as I said, I can't put my finger on, on why it's it's frustrating and why we're not backing it up. Mm. But um, yeah, it it does hurt. But as Pete said, how much more can we learn? Mm. Yeah, I, I, does anyone say anything about it full time in the dressing room, or is it pointless exercise at that point? No, if you, if you just you try and lift fellas up, and you know it's going to be disappointing for a while. You kind of motivate and there's another trophy there to play for us but I suppose tomorrow a lot of stuff will come out of, of what happened and how we underperformed you know and we'll trash it out and then we'll concentrate on Ulster mm. You're now a more experienced um, player in that dressing room obviously do you speak more in those Tuesday review meetings than you would have five years ago I certainly presume ten years ago but will you be one of the fellows who leads that or do you tend to stay is it your, in your nature to stay quiet maybe in those meetings and just let it in? Yeah, no, I, I've, I, I used to speak a lot in Munster, like, you know, I kind of, I kind of step back now a small bit, like, you know, and I suppose try and get myself right and, and try and lead by my actions as well. And if there's something to say, I'll say, you know, I think the coaches and, and, and Pete, you know, they always, they always say what they have to say and they, they get it right a lot of the time, you know. And it's interesting you're speaking less. Usually it would go the opposite way as a player gets older. Any reason? Yeah, no, I just found, you know, it's just, it's, it's easy to talk, you know. I just want to start doing it by actions. Like, you know, you, you, you play with fellas, sometimes a lot of them are big talkers, but then they, they don't produce. So I try and go by my actions now, like, you know. Talk is cheap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's interesting. Some fellas use talk to almost G themselves up. Yeah. Them, as well, it's not actually yeah. helping anyone around them. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're dead right. You know, and um, look, I don't I don't talk much in Ireland. You know, I kind of lead by example up there. You know, we did we did have I did have to talk quite a bit in one stop, but you know, there's fellas that have been around a long time now, and there's a lot of leaders in in Munster now who who lead by their actions and. You know, as I said, if there's something to say, we'll say it, but I think actions is more important. How much talk do you need, really? Yeah. That's the point. Everyone yeah. kind of can see the same stuff, yeah, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of, I'm really disappointed that it's today that you've landed in here, because especially over the last maybe 18 months in particular, two years, I've been desperate to get you to chat to you, because it did look from afar, without knowing the intricacies, obviously, of what's going on, but it looked like a far, from afar, like you'd really arrived as a rugby player. And I, I don't mean from a talent perspective. I just meant you looked really at home, confident in yourself, um, like a pro's pro, you know, mature, everything you kind of hope that you'd develop into. Um, and I saw you give a few interviews around the Six Nations where you did talk about this almost 10-year uh, yeah, yeah. journey, which kind of backed up. But you, you, could, you could see it on the pitch, even before I read those interviews, that there was just almost a steeliness about you. You, kinda, you knew yourself, you knew your game, you knew what you were about. It can take some players a year, it can take some players 
10 years. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose, you know, I was younger, I was trying to be like other players and trying to be like certain players, but now I'm just being, being myself, you know, I've, I'm just trying to back my own talent and my own game and enjoy it and, you know, and play what I see and not try and be like anyone else. I spent too long trying to, mm. to be like loads of other people and, you know, That must be a weight off your shoulders to just think, I just have to be myself now. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of regret there as well, obviously, like, you know, because was I left a lot of games behind me and a lot of years behind me and a lot of fellas I would have liked to win trophies with, you know, and not that saying that, that I would have won trophies with the player I am now, like, but I would have been able to look myself in the mirror and say, being happy, but I probably tapped out a small bit. Mm. What is tapped out? What does that mean? I said I probably could have recovered a lot better. I could have looked after my my diet a lot better um, you know as I said there when I got injured before I took the foot off the pedal and when I got back I regretted not looking after myself because I was extremely unfit and stuff but but now I'm, I'm looking after myself and I said all six nations have, have a good balance now like you know and you know it seems to be working mm. I do vividly remember the 09 Lions tour sorry to bring that up but no, yeah. In your in your first game, I think it was one of the first times you came into contact with the ball, mm. and that, you know it's it's terrible to say this now about two thousand and nine, but younger listeners might not remember. You know, you were the the hot shot, that that young kid that gets in, yeah, yeah, on the plane, and um, I think it was against the Royal Fifteen. It was your, yeah. your first game, mm. and it was one of the first times you came into contact with the ball, and you dropped it. Yeah, and I mean, I've never I've never seen a, a guy's confidence. It felt like again, it's great to talk to you, but from afar, it seemed like visibly that really affected you. You know, one yeah. mistake in a game. Yeah. But you could almost see colour drain from your face kind of thing. Yeah, and that, I suppose, that's I didn't... I suppose probably the worst times of my life as well. Like, you know, it was a hard lesson I had to learn. As you said, I came in as young 21-year-olds. But, like, I'd, I'd been... I think it was picked for lines and I came across a couple of comments that knocked my confidence even before going out there. And then like, what's this guy doing? Yeah, yeah. Is he good enough? Yeah, I don't need... So it was two caps, one and a half caps. I started against Canada and came off the bench against New Zealand. Hadn't played in the Six Nations. Um, but I just didn't have the experience or the, I suppose, the mental strength to, to block all that out. And I tried to prove people wrong to show them that I was worthy of being on the Lions tour. And obviously, I tried too hard. And, and Did you feel going out like you were good enough to be on? The plane, or were you going out thinking, God, maybe I'm not good enough to be on this plane in 09? Yeah, no, I was, I was thinking, what the hell am I doing here with these fellas? Right. You know, you were, you had Shane Williams there, who's, who's a world player there at the time, you know, Jamie Roberts, and all these superstars who had been winning Grand Slams, and even our own Irish team, they had won a Grand Slam, but I hadn't been part of it, and so I was just there. I suppose it was nearly like felt like a supporter, and 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 that that was my issue. When I was younger as well. Was was no confidence, like you know. No confidence. Do you know why? No, I was probably probably too humble. Not not too humble, but I suppose it was just shocked to the system that I was there. I couldn't believe that you were that good. Yeah, that I was good enough to play next to these fellas. Mm. You know. Um, at the end of the day, they were probably thinking the same. See, I, 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 I doubt they were because you had shown enough. It's funny how we have different perceptions of ourselves. Like mm. a lot of people were so excited to see you go on that 09 tour because it was like, well, you know, this guy he can do amazing things that other players can't do. But it's amazing you drop that first ball and you must think all the lads around me are thinking he's not good enough. There's the people in the stands now thinking he's not good enough. Like, geez, how could you even begin to perform well with those thoughts in your head? Yeah, and I think I said it's Luke Fitzgerald and piece with him a couple of weeks ago that right. I remember going around apologising to the lads that night. Is that right? You know, I was saying, oh, I'm sorry, I was, I was brutal or whatever, you know, and that's, I don't know, it was just a sign of mental weakness in, in my part, you I'd know. I'd say they were saying to you, don't be silly. Yeah. Because yeah. they would know how damaging that yeah, is Yeah, it was, and I remember like Shane that. Williams, like, obviously he was great, and, and Rob Holy was great for me as well over there, you know, and, and to remember Rob Holy telling me, 
the jersey can make you feel six foot tall or it can make you feel six inches tall, like, you know, and mm. obviously I was the, the six inches, but look, I learned a lot from it as, as well, you know, and... Um, Did it take a long time to get over? To get your confidence back, or when you got back to Munster, did you feel okay again? Yeah, no, it took it took a while to to kind of get over it, like you know, and I suppose I I started to come good in the World Cup in 2011, and all the warm up games, and took another dent after the World Cup, and I just didn't know how to deal with the ups and downs of it. Where where I do now? How do you deal with them now? A lot of it's perspective now, like you know, but. A lot of it now is 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 doing a lot of stuff during the week, you know, physically looking after myself, my mental prep, you know, your analysis of your own game plan and, you know, the other team and being able to give everything and then, I suppose, look yourself in the mirror and say, look, there's not more I could have done mm. and, and that's it. I'm sure part of the mental prep is private, like it's your, it's your space, but people are very interested in what that means. Like, I remember a couple of years ago, um, you were doing an interview and you were talking about how uh, you were very superstitious before games. You'd have to have certain medals with you and if they were left at the hotel, it was a disaster. And, yeah. And Kenneth Egan might have come in one stage and uh, talked to the team and said, you need to knock that kind of stuff on the head. Mm -hmm. So so that's a sign of, I don't know what, some kind of anxiety, I guess, a superstition, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's an anxiety coming out, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they're dead right. And like... I would have grew up with a paranoid father as well, like, you know, who was, who had all these mad superstitions and if you grew up around some things like that, it, it sticks in your head, you know, and yeah. I think as, as Limerick people and as Irish people, we tend to think negative most of the time. A little bit. So how do you compare, say, now, the, the past week with maybe a Keith Earls in his early to mid-twenties in terms of how you'll think about the game and what you might do preparation-wise mentally? Yeah, look, I would obviously go through the game every day before it, you know, visualising and stuff like that. And Do you visualise uh, you, as in what you're seeing on the pitch, or would you visualise as if you're watching from the stand or on TV? I do both, yeah. I sit in the cinema and watch myself and then actually get out there and... And, and see it and, and feel see it. it. And feel it, you know, and I think it's... It's powerful. It, it's not for everyone, you know. And it's I, I think it's a it's a powerful thing. And I suppose that's relaxed me a bit more, knowing that I suppose I've been here. Do you only visualise things going well? No, no. I visualise mistakes as well, and how how I react to mistakes. Then. So how a drop ball against the Royal Fifteen? Fast forward ten years, drop ball happens now in a game. When you're visualising it on the cinema screen, what's are in your in your head? What's the Earls? Way of dealing with it. It's just next job saying, look. Shit happens. Exactly, yeah, shit happens, next job, you know, and you visualise getting the next pass and doing something simple, you know, getting back into it rather than trying to force it. And that's what happened to me in 09, I was trying to force it. Mm. And, you know, now I drop a ball, I get on to the next job, and I suppose the big thing is, is, is not to hide you know, and I try and get out there and put myself in the most uncomfortable positions I can, even if things aren't going well for me. Mm. You know, if, if I ever felt that um, I didn't want to be playing because of my sex, then I'd, I'd give it up, you know, and I'd, um, I enjoy and put myself in comfortable positions, you know, and mentally test myself. And do you enjoy rugby now in a way that you never have before, or did you always enjoy it even early on? No, I'd, I, you know, when my confidence was low, I, I hate playing this, like, you know, and, but really? I, I knew deep down I loved it, you know, but yeah, it was yeah. this negative downward spiral I was in, I I wasn't enjoying it and I hated it and I thought it meant everything, whereas now, obviously I give it everything and I suppose I, I enjoy it and I love it now and every now and then the thought would come into your head and it comes into everywhere we player's head and I don't care what they say, they don't enjoy it every week. It's just how you deal with that. Mm. So, uh, God, I mean, hating it is a grim thought, isn't it? Going into, like, going into training thinking, oh, it's just, yeah. this isn't, I don't really want to be here that much. Yeah, and I know we're privileged and... Would you ever play well hating it? Like, you know when you're in that hating it cycle? Could you still be playing okay at times? Yeah, you can, yeah. Because they're, they're just thoughts, but then when you get out there, you're like, right, you know, I, I actually do 
love this, like, you know, and yeah. as, again, it goes back to how you deal with it. If that thought comes into your head, you just cut it in half and, yeah. you know, you go back to thinking why you're playing it and who you're playing it for. I suspect the 30-year-old Earls would love to go back and get a five-minute chat with the 20-year-old Earls. Yeah, 100%, <laughs> but um, unfortunately I can't and all I can do now is work hard for the next five, six years. Yeah. Is the regret... You must, I mean, I, I, you said earlier you feel some regret over some lost years, I'm sure. Is that a regular thought? No, no, I try and leave it all behind me, you know, you know and obviously it pops up every now and then, but I suppose the big thing is there's nothing you can do about mm. that now, and the big thing is literally another thing I'm trying to work on is being in, being in the moment, not thinking too far ahead, and I think, I think that's why I enjoy rugby more now, I'm just living day by day rather than leaving my thoughts go in, into Saturday and being negative I'm just just thinking about whatever I'm doing yeah so what, everything is. what happened yesterday can't dictate what happens tomorrow yeah exactly and uh, look we're going to look at it and it's going to be disappointing but you know we'll get some positive out of it and, and we'll try and kick on yeah because I couldn't believe actually this stuff about um you know, you spent a lot of time trying to be too big and then too skinny. Like, you spent a lot of your time trying to be up to 95 kgs and, and maybe you're kind of better at 86 to 88. And uh, I, was kind of, I remember reading that a while back thinking, how is this happening in a professional yeah. environment that's something like weight? You would think that's, that's just like a basic, everyone's got that nailed down and you're spending almost years in the wilderness trying to figure out what weight you should be. Yeah, and, and that's, probably, that's probably my person, personality, you know, um, as I said, I was, I'd be all over the place for a while. I couldn't find who I was, you know, and that, and that was the thing. Um, if I see someone like Dougie Howlett do something, I was like, he's Dougie Howlett, I'm going to do it, rather than just, you know, being myself. And the Munster teams I'd played with always had to be ratty with each other and get each other going, always calling up on each other. Or I'd have to be like Polly, I'd have to be like Raj, rather than, why can't I be just... Keith Earls and yeah. you know and, and be the best Keith Earls possible and, and that's what I've done now I'm not going to be like Paulie I'm not going to be like Raj and they're going to have to take me for who I am yeah that's very interesting I can see though how you'd look at Dougie Howlett perfect beautiful Dougie Howlett and yeah. think I should do what he's doing yeah yeah and he was, he was massive for me as well and Rue and, and, Ru and, and Maths as well when they were there like you know and as in giving you advice? Yeah, advice and Ian Dowling and I was looking at all these different fellas and they were all different players and I was just trying to be like them and you know, you'd be reading stuff when you were younger and you'd be trying to do that and all the new science about diet and how rugby was big, how it was small, how it was fast and everything and I just couldn't get the grips of it and I drove myself mad for years, you know, and you know, people just don't know what's going on in other people's head and mm. thankfully I'm in, in a good place. Good. Well, I guess it's probably as one of those lessons you learn in your sports career that can ex extend to life, really, can't it? Yeah, exactly, you know, and I think, I suppose, life is more important now than, than rugby to me. Good. Listen, um, hard luck yesterday. Uh, I can tell you're still fairly sick and all the same and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thanks a million. Cheers, thanks. Off the ball. On News Talk. The two-for-seven euro Whopper deal from Burger King is so good, it's perfect to share with that fella you don't like at work. That's two regular Whoppers made with flame-grilled 100% Irish beef, all for just seven euro. So grab Mr. Let's do lunch. You'll be like, I like my Whopper. He'll be like, I like my Whopper. Besties! The two-for-seven euro Whopper deal from Burger King at participating restaurants for a limited time only. It gets better when you bring great together. Like Air Superfast Fibre Broadband plus powerful 4G Mobile. Sign up today and get free Air Sport and BT Sports. And a free Samsung smartphone. All for just €40 Euro a month for the first 12 months. For more great combinations, call 1-800-500-300, go in store or search Air 40. Air. Let's make possible. New customers only, €96 Euro a month thereafter, 24-month contract. Subject to availability. User experience may vary. For full details, fair usage and terms, see air.ie. The new 100%